Hey guys, this is Dan with Gears and Gadgets. Thanks for tuning in. So I'm very excited because today is a new camera day. This is a Panasonic Lumix S5 II. This camera had just come out and I've only had it for a few days. I pre-ordered it and I wanted to make this video mainly because I've seen other reviews, but they've all been sponsored. I wanted to make this video as somebody who had purchased the camera myself and share with you guys because I do know a lot of viewers of this channel are also content creators or just people that are interested in good gear. So I'll link in the description down below to an Amazon affiliate. But again, this is a camera that I purchased myself and I wanted to talk about it. So a year and a half ago, I bought my first Lumix S5 sitting over there. And that camera came with the 20 to 60 millimeter kit lens. That whole kit cost me $2,153. I was finally at the point where I wanted to spend a good amount of money on a camera for this channel. And I saw a lot of good reviews about Lumix. This is why I'm coming in to make this video now as an unsponsored, uh, just individual who paid for the camera because there's certainly some things that are worth noting. Now the new S5 II, this camera does come with the same 20 to 60 millimeter uh, lens. And when I bought that camera, I loved the quality of the picture. But what I did not like with that camera was in the handheld vlogging style, 20 millimeters was just too tight for me in terms of that shot. So when I saw the 16 to 35 lens, I at the point decided that I would make the jump for that. Unfortunately, that lens costs about $1,200. So a year and a half ago, I was sitting with a camera that was worth about three grand, way more than I wanted to spend on camera gear, but I was happy that I did it because the quality of video that was coming out of that camera was awesome. And after I bought this 16 to 35 lens, I had the other kit lens just sitting on a shelf. So about six months had gone by and I started looking at that lens and thought, maybe I should just buy another Lumix S5 because I have the other lens, I'll just buy the body for another $2,000 and just slap the other kit lens that I had on there. And now I was running with two Lumix S5s. So I really fell in love with the Lumix line of cameras, Panasonic's, and when they announced this S5 II, it was tough because again, just a year and a half that I've had the, the first camera and about a year since I've had you know the second camera, it's very hard to justify making another purchase. So I, I just decided with the new phase detect autofocus, I had to do it. And after the first few days of messing around with this camera, having the ability to film side-by-side -side shots with the original S5 compared to the S5 II, I've got to say, I am really blown away with this camera. The reason why I've gone this route with Panasonic is because for two grand, a full frame camera, I don't think there's anything better on the market. The only problem with the original S5 was its autofocus was atrocious. I've got some video samples here that you can look at where it's really pulsing quite a bit on these videos that I've done previously. And the pulsation is absolutely uh, ridiculous. It's really difficult. I know for YouTube, it's probably passable, but as somebody who really takes pride in the, you know, what I'm producing, it was just too much for me. Uh, and I was driving me nuts when editing these videos. So now that this S5 II has phase detect autofocus, it is an absolute game changer. So I am actually running this lens, which is a $1,200 lens, really ridiculous, 16 to 35. And what it does is it just shows a little bit more of the room. I like that look on a vlog type style video, but they also just released this 14 to 28 for 797. I really wish they would have released that before I spent 1200 bucks on the lens that I have now. I think I got it on sale for about 1200, but now that they have a 14 to 28 at 800 bucks, this camera setup for under $3,000 to be able to have the, as good a quality as this camera does with a wider lens at the 14 is to me just an absolute game changer. So out here in the garage, this is where I really utilize this 16 to 35 uh, millimeter lens. I get a nice wide view as you can see here. I also get a nice bokeh effect behind me. This is where I really test my camera gear quite a bit. Out in this garage, it pushes well over 100 degrees on some of the days that I'm filming. Having camera gear that can withstand the heat is the most important thing. There's a lot of times that I've been filming videos with GoPros, they overheat. 
I've gone as far as throwing them in the freezer to try to cool them down. It, it really just breaks up the filming flow. I run very, very long format video. I'll just set the cameras up, record what I'm doing. It's not very scripted. And I do that because I want the content to be as organic as possible to the viewers. So I need a camera that's capable of handling the heat and these Lumix S5, well the original S5, and I'm assuming the S5 II will do even better because now it has a cooling fan built in. So I've had great luck running these things for upwards of 45 minutes of recording without any sort of issues and I anticipate the new S5 II being even better than that. So let me take you guys into the office and I'll show you all of the camera gear that I've gone through to get to this point which I think is the best camera I've ever used and probably the last camera I'll need to buy up until I break this one. So let's go take a look at how many cameras it's taken me to get to this point of finding the the right solution for me. So we'll start with the most recent cameras. Here we have the S5 that I'm running in conjunction with this one, the original S5 that sold me on the platform to begin with. And then we start going down the rabbit hole of, well, we'll talk about GoPros. GoPro Hero 10, Hero 4, 7, Hero 9, GoPro 360 camera. So this is the trial and error of every year purchasing the new GoPro under the promise that it's gotten better. I feel like that's kind of GoPro's thing every year is they come out with a new camera and it's supposedly going to be much better than the old one. Every single one of these GoPros has an overheating problem. Now this is the original Canon T3i that I started shooting with back when I started this channel. It's covered in dust because it's become a decoration. Then we also have the Sony ZV-10. I went from the Canon T3i and then I started going through a bunch of GoPros because I thought GoPros should be able to do it all for me. What I found with all of these GoPros is that after about 15 to 20 minutes of any sort of recording in a static environment, not moving, they overheat and it's very, very difficult to record with these. Matter of fact, I was having such overheating issues that I built this camera cooler case and I put a bunch of screen in here. That way I could put an ice pack in here and have cool air blowing up on a camera. So that was my experience with all of these different cameras with this channel. So when somebody comments inevitably on how stupid it is to spend around three grand between the camera body and the lenses, I'll tell you right now, this is only a fraction of the cameras that I've had on the channel. Panasonic is the first camera I've ever been able to just set up on a tripod, press record, do what I need to do for a long duration, and then know that it was recording the entire time and not have any sort of hiccups. These are part of the frustrations of being a one-man show. I don't have somebody behind the camera to identify or be pulling focus the entire time that I'm shooting. So the way that I edit, I decided to simulate here in the garage, which was setting up A-B shots. So I just took the camera, set them right next to each other and let them do their work to see the difference between the S5 and the S5 II and really demonstrate to you guys why it's important to spend the money on good gear. So this is an example of me just hanging up some shelves in the garage or some tracks in the garage, doing some organization. And you can see the S5, whenever it sees that I'm in frame, if I have my back turned and turned around, it starts really hunting. So this is a spot that you can see where the S5 really starts to struggle not having phase detect, is that it struggles when I turn and all of a sudden my face is in the camera, uh, that phase detect not being there, you really suffer for it. You can see it start to pulse in and out again between the lights. The S5 II does not do that. It holds its own uh, very well. And you can see here's the S5 hunting for that focus. Here's the S5 II just really sticking with me. And this is all on automatic out of the uh, box, really no monkeying with any of the settings. This is a really bad one. As I walk through the frame, you can see it really loses me. The S5, it just goes straight out of focus. The S5 II, no problem with that shot whatsoever. Keeps the same focus the whole way through. I also expect a lot of this is going to even improve even further through additional firmware updates. So where it's at currently is night and day better from where it was before, and I can only imagine it'll only get better. So here's another one where I was actually draining out old fuel out of my motorcycle. S5, again, hunting all over the place. S5 II, Keeps on pretty good there. So there you have it. Those are the samples of, you know, the S5 versus the S5 II for anybody else who's out there maybe kind of looking at considering making the jump to the S5 II. I also wanted to put this video out because there's probably going to be a handful, including one of mine S5s hitting the secondary market. So I'm hoping that I help steer somebody 
with a little bit of direction here because I know that people who watch this channel also are potential creators. Very, very happy with this purchase. I will continue now to run the S5 II as my run and gun, and then I will have one S5 as a stationary camera as, you know, the, I guess, this type of setup here where I'm sitting here just speaking to camera, which this was all shot on my, uh, one of the S5s that I have here. So I'll keep that as that setup, and then the S5 II is the run and gun, and I'm super happy with that setup. Don't see any need to buy any camera gear anytime soon. This is probably the first time in the history of my YouTube channel, six, seven years, that I can say I have no need to look for any other camera gear. Uh, since this started, I've always been looking for the next piece of kit that I want to add, and I, I don't feel that way now, and I don't foresee that changing anytime in the near future. I think the Panasonic S5 II is absolutely the camera for me. With that being said, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. I hope this video helped somebody out there in their purchasing decisions. And with that, again, I thank you very much. If this is your first time tuning in, please hit that subscribe button down below. Remember, likes go a long way to help support the channel. See you guys next time.